ahead and fire this thing off. The ACC. Now, this happened. <laughs> ben jumps in immediately. He said, Rutgers is letting in 0%. Really going to miss those fans. Yeah. Yeah, Syracuse as well. New York did say that. We weren't going to talk about the negatives. Uh, Syracuse will not be able to have fans. Uh, no other teams in New York, New Jersey, whatever, will be able to have fans. So, definitely not good. But, either way. The positive news, the ACC, of course, talking about having a season. We saw the Big Ten and the Pac-12 go to conference only. The SEC, ACC, and Big 12 likely, I think, to go conference only, but obviously they're waiting until the beginning of August, which is just a couple of weeks away to uh, to decide that. But one of the scheduling options that the ACC has put forward and it's leaked out. They've got a bunch of different options, but one of them that is incredibly interesting, at least to us, is the idea of bringing in Notre Dame and having a pod system to where you only, it, it's five teams each. So there's 14 teams currently in the ACC. You add in Notre Dame, that's 15. You do three pods of five teams, and you only play those teams. So it would be an eight-game schedule, home and away for each team. Now, Chris, before I let you begin, because I know you're raring to go, let me read off the pods here. The first one would be Clemson, Florida State, Miami, Georgia Tech, and Virginia Tech. The second would be Notre Dame. That's a loaded pod, considering that conference is pretty weak outside of Clemson. And it and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I mean, that is every other good team outside of bringing in Notre Dame. So uh, the, the other side of this is no, they would. No disperse, well, I guess that's that's disrespect to the rest of those teams. But, yeah, that, that's completely disrespectful. The, to them. the other side of this is that they are doing this in hopes of having a ninth game be against whoever their SEC or whatever rival would be, right? So they would have one Non-conference Saving game. non-con game. Yes. So, with that one, Clemson, FSU, Miami, Georgia Tech, Virginia Tech. Pod B would be Notre Dame, Louisville, Syracuse, Pittsburgh, Boston College. Pod C would be North Carolina, NC State, Wake Forest, Duke, and Virginia. Now, I understand the North Carolina pod, right? In Utah, and Virginia, they are the closest to those schools. However, with the other Pod with Clemson having Virginia Tech, Georgia Tech, Miami, and Florida State in it. What? How do you not have Virginia Tech and Virginia in the same pod? I don't know. I mean, it, I don't under. I don't understand. I think these people come up with good ideas, and then they just they they fall so short of executing them well. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't. I don't know the reason behind the pods. Just say if we're going to play only conference games, do what we talked about earlier, which, which, which we kind of assume that the Big Ten's going to do, but maybe they don't, which is make make a four-week schedule and then every two weeks kick it out two more weeks and just figure it out. But when you lock yourself into these five teams are only going to play one another, what happens if one of them goes down for two weeks with the Rona? Now you've affected another team in that pod when they could just say, okay, yeah. that team is down. Let's bring in this other team. They got two weeks of a bye week, and then we'll get them back in the mix later. Like, you've handcuffed yourself by doing this. It, it's really you've made strange. this thing that's already complicated more complicated f- because of your own foolery. Oh, before we go further, it, I haven't explained on the show because Chris and I were, were debating this a little bit before we went live. Uh, this, this whole thing is basically to limit the travel and limit the amount of interactions between people. Now, to me, it doesn't make sense to play the same team twice because there will be so much time in between that that other person could possibly get the coronavirus or whatever. Right. What difference would it make who it is on the other side? Like, it, it, to me, it doesn't make any difference, right? So the amount of travel, like you, you've talked about the travel, oh. it's so dumb. It is we absolutely. Have, we have to stop using travel for college football as an excuse for the big power five schools that make yes. a gazillion dollars. We have to stop using travel as an excuse. There is no different from the University of Miami to fly to Seattle and play the University of Washington than it is from Alabama to get on a bus and drive to Auburn. There's zero difference in that. 
They are going to be on a charter plane that is going to go from point A to point B. They're going to go to a hotel that they book up the whole thing. They're the only people in it. And then they're going to take a chartered bus that they're the only people in it and go to the stadium. That's it. There is, there is no difference whatsoever if Ole Miss were to come up and play Memphis, which is 35, 45 minutes away, all right, down the road. That no difference in the travel for both of those outside of that plane ride is just a longer bus ride. That's it. We have to stop using that as an excuse. So you're going you're gonna to fat load one division with four of the best teams in the conference and then you're going to have another division with four of the worst, five of the worst teams in the conference, strictly because they're all close to one another. Listen, that's that's something that that the Sun Belt Conference needs to be doing. Okay, that's something that these little G5 schools need to be thinking about. That is not something that the ACC needs to be worried about. I assure you, there's enough money for Boston College to fly to Miami. That can happen. They can make that plane ride happen without a massive expense. Okay. You still get Virginia Tech and Virginia playing one another. You make that happen. I don't. I just don't get the. Once again, they're taking an already complicated situation by dealing with the Rona, and making it more complicated just because that's what college. That's what college officials do. That's what this administration does. I, they just. They're just morons. I have no idea how these people got the jobs that they got. I don't understand what they're good at outside of raising money. That's That seems to be all these athletic directors are good at at all. All these school presidents are good at is just raising money because they don't know how to problem solve. They don't know how to troubleshoot. They create, they're solving the wrong problems, which is travel. That's not a problem that you have, by the way, but they're really going to solve that problem, not a problem, outside of solving the health problem and the safety problem. And, and, and the scheduling problem, they, that, those are real problems, but they don't want to solve those. No, yeah. no, no. They don't want to give themselves flexibility and ins and outs to be able to maneuver and manipulate. They, they want to solve all the wrong problems. Yeah, I, just, I agree. I just can't explain how frustrating it is to watch morons work. So I'm in the construction world, okay? I'm in and out of construction. Listen, this is, this is no stereotype, no disbursement to the, to the good people that do that work. But I watch, I sit back and I watch construction projects all day long, okay? And 70% of the people that walk onto these, these sites are, are complete morons. And watching them try to figure out very simple problems, a little amusing and a lot of sad. Yes. yes. This is no different except these guys make seven figures and those guys make, make double-digit figures, okay? They make tens of dollars and they make millions of dollars. Yes, Oh, very much so. Matt Miller jumps on YouTube, by the way. Uh, he said, not playing out-of-conference games doesn't make sense at all, even if the travel thing did matter. There are plenty of out-of-conference games that are close, like Florida and FSU, Georgia, Georgia Tech. Now, hold on, hold on. Let me let me tackle this one. Uh, we've already discussed this on the show. I believe it was last Monday's show, uh, where we went through an entire 35-minute ordeal explaining why conference only would would actually work the best for this season. And the reason that is is because every conference is going to have different testing protocols. They're going to have different protocols for whatever they need to get done, right? So there's one basic NCAA one, and then there's a different one for each conference. So you can only set it for your conference teams, right? So you, if you're Alabama, you know exactly what Auburn's going to be doing. You know exactly what LSU's going to be doing. You know exactly what Florida, Georgia, whatever is going to be doing. If you are Alabama... You don't know what Clemson's doing. If you're Florida State, you don't know what Florida's doing, and vice versa. So that's why it makes it obviously the ADs talk, and you're going to want to do everything as as best as possible. But if somebody else is cutting corners, you don't want to put your team at risk. And it's not just the cutting corners or the testing. It's the control of the schedule. Yes. What happens if the week of a non-con game, one team gets hit real bad with the virus? a commissioner can make a ruling and figure out to manipulate the schedule. We're trying to get in basically eight to 10 games in 15 weeks. Okay. But if you're dealing with two commissioners trying to work out two conference schedules to make up this one meaningless game, it's just not worth it. 
I don't understand the purpose of doing it. And you're not going to really have fans in the stands, even if you're at half capacity. That's not a road game. That's a, you know, going into Death Valley with 40,000 people, going into Austin, Texas with 50,000 people isn't a home game for no. anybody. Nobody has a home field advantage doing that. No, not so, at all. So let's so let's let's be reasonable and just I just want like I said and we talked about this last week you want conference only because that's our best way to get a real full schedule in because those individual conference commissioners can control everything they just have to not put together some bullshit cockamamie plan that doesn't make sense at all and makes their job even harder Correct. The games that you need to get in this season are your division games. That's yes. it. And and for the conferences that don't have divisions, at that point it doesn't really matter. Like, no, hey, you want to get in your big rivalry games. At some yeah. point in time, we're going to want Oklahoma and Texas to play each other somewhere. Yeah, that, we that, want Oklahoma, game, Oklahoma State, and Oklahoma, you know? Oklahoma State. That those games need to happen, and 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 that's that's a big deal. Baylor and TCU need to happen at some point in time, and 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 that's okay. But, yeah. you know, we can um, figure that out. Let's see. Matt Miller, uh, say, oh, uh, Joseph Gomez, by the way, going back to your uh, construction stuff, he said, how many people do you need to dig a hole? Six to watch, one to dig. Yeah. Oh, no. All, and all those people watching are all the people with a degree, and the poor sap digging is some Guatemalan that, that makes eight bucks an hour. Yeah. Uh, Matt Miller said that's why we need a commissioner because every conference should have the same protocols. Well, that's kind of difficult because not every conference makes the same amount of money. That's so the that's that's the biggest problem with this whole thing. You can't, now, you can't tell the Sun Belt, it, 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 you know, to 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 spend the same amount of money on testing. That, I mean, that's a beautiful world that we would live in if they would have that luxury. But the MAC don't have that. They just don't have that luxury. They don't have that the, kind of money. The and idea of, all those pay for win uh, um, money that they were getting in, you know, from this year, they're losing all that. The, uh, the the idea of socialism is great. It's a utopian world. No, hang on. In but it doesn't work. It actually like, would work. Yes, it would work in, in college sports because it's not real life, okay? It's a it's a sport. The eh, NFL okay. is socialism, okay? Major League Baseball is socialism, all right? One large person over everybody telling everybody what to do and sharing the revenue equally works great in sports. It in absolutely sports, works. Yes. Okay. But okay. and there's a there's a way to there's absolutely a way to do it, especially if you continue to not pay the players. You've got enough money to go around for everybody. Yes. Um, like I said, if every power five team just threw two million bucks into a hat every year and that two million dollars from every team went to uh, divide it equally between all the G five schools, then then bam, you've fixed the problem and they no longer have to play them ever again. Yeah, that'd be nice. That would be nice. I but... fixed it. Boom. Mark Emmer, there you go. Free idea for you right there. <laughs> Problem solved. God Problem solved. Man. I like it. I like it. Um, Matt Miller said, uh, I'm just talking Power 5 or Power 6. I could care less about Akron. So, And then he said the American is 6th. Yeah. Uh, Mike Camp, and that's how it works with the money as well. So, yeah, but they don't, know. but I mean, there's just no reason for the ACC and the SEC to play this year unless you get all 10 of your games in. And you realize that this virus hasn't beat up these schools that badly and everything seems to be going fine. And you get into week 11 and week 12 and you say, we got nothing else to do before the end of the season. You guys want to play? And then you figure it out. Then you get with the commissioner, you work a deal, and you put a game up. I'm sure ESPN would love the inventory. Yeah. No, absolutely. It's, um, just, it's not hard to do these things on the back end. You don't have to have it all planned out on the front end. Uh, Mike Campion said the problem will also be the local restrictions. Uh, and I want to get to something that he said earlier as well, and, which he's right about local restrictions, by the way, uh, because, I mean, the different states have got worse situations than others. So right. it's just going to be up to what's going on in those states. Like, you may be able to have Kentucky-Louisville and not have Clemson-South Carolina. It just depends on what's going on, right? So, I mean, we'll we'll see what happens there. Mike also said uh, now there's going to be a major debate for who gets in the playoffs. I will go ahead and admit on this show, I don't care if no. we have a playoff or not. I just want a season one way or another. Well, now a playoff would be great. I'm I'm being I'm being flexible. I'm willing to give up a lot this year, okay? Yeah. Just to get football in. Give me That's, football, give me lines, give me something to bet on and something to watch, and I will be fine. Give me real games that matter. I don't even care if the outcome who you know, 
what the standings are and how you rank. No, Clemson and, and Ohio State are going to moonwalk to undefeated seasons probably. That's fantastic. That's great. Who's number one? Who's number two? I don't know. We'll figure that out later. I'm not worried about it. I just want to have something to do on Saturday mornings when I wake up. My wife is yelling at me to cut the grass. And I got to say, no, I got to watch football. Yeah. Uh, That's Mike, all I want. My, uh, let's see. Matt Miller said, the, uh, this disproves the BS about changing the schedules because of the scheduling in advance. This season is going to throw that lie out the window. Here's hoping. Oh, if, if Alabama and BYU can get together a, a week one game a month out, it, obviously you can do it. <laughs> Other years as well, right now oh. you've already got schedule or contracts drawn up, all that kind of mess I, right now. But I've you don't have to do that. that. Four years, LSU is scheduled to play a home and home with somebody a decade from now. Who yeah. the hell is going to be the coach of those teams? What are they going to look like? Are we all going to be? I'm probably not going to be alive in ten years. Yeah, I mean, it, well, I doubt that. You better hey, be man. around. Winning cures everything is going to be celebrating fifteen years. So that's, that's uh, good. Mike Campion Let's said, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> he said, unfortunately, I'm not hopeful for college football because a lot of people don't care about sports. Here is what the people that are in charge of that do care about, though, and that is money. And if you don't play college football, you don't have money. You have to cut a lot of different things that that college football money goes to support, and that includes different academic situations, different academic institutions inside of your college. A lot of those things get their trickle down from college football. So when these presidents don't really give a rip one way or the other, whether they're sports on TV or not, they do care about that green. That changes I, things. You, you brought up something. I want to, this is a tangent. It might affect how long the show goes. I apologize. But I want to tell me what you think of this solution. Listening to my favorite sports podcast to listen to outside of ours is, is the, the Yahoo college sports podcast. Dan Wetzel, Pat Forty, Pete Thamel. I Worst about the feet of Dan Wetz. I yeah. love that man. There's never been a writer outside of Tony Kornheiser that's meant more to me in my life. Um, this guy was talking about, he brought up the conversation of Title IX. And if you have football, you have to at least legally, because of Title IX, have to have some women's sports. Talk. Well, you got 100 football scholarships, so you need to have a 100 female scholarships thrown, thrown out there somewhere for, for athletic. Is it possible to still get, like, to say this year, because of financials, we're not going to play women's volleyball and women's soccer, women, but we're still going to provide the scholarship to the people that have it? So you still give out the 100 female scholarships so we're legally okay? And they're give, you got it strictly for sports. It's only for women that are currently there that played last year that have their scholarship in hand. But – as long as the scholarships equal each other and it's for athletics and not academics, that's, that's got to pass the law, right? Without saying we don't have the money to play your sport this year, but you still get the year of education for free on us. I would you imagine. Think that would fly? Cause I think that would, I think that would suffice the legal problem. I think and so. Yeah. These women still get their year of education, education and if they and, and then I would grant everybody red shirt it to where if they all those women basketball players or whatever whoever, whoever you give the scholarships to, if if they want a red shirt and continue playing after that, they're just going to get continued education on the house. I, I think that's it a makes fair, sense to me, but at, at the same time, you're thinking logically and that's our problem. Is, it's, I, the NCAA yeah. just doesn't. Yeah, These some, people just don't. don't. Like, well, and, and why do they on have that, to play the sport to not get – like, you don't have to say, well, I'm sorry, we couldn't afford to play the sport, but we've got this funny money where you can only use it at the company store. That costs us nothing. Well, here's, here's the online, other side, that though. Costs us nothing. It, here's the other side of this is that, that Title IX issue is a federal law, and the NCAA doesn't really have anything to do with it, right? But that's why like, I think That's why I think that – would suffice the federal law because the federal yeah. law says you have to have equal equal scholarships for equal athletics, right? Yeah, I would I would think so. You got a hundred football scholarships, and those are the only people playing this year that we care about because they generate all the money, but they're not going to generate enough to play any of these other sports. So we're yeah. not going to cut your scholarships. We're still going to give out a hundred female scholarships. Yeah, I think it'd be fine. 
I think it'd be fine. Uh, Joseph Gomez jumps in on YouTube, by the way. They have more than a couple months to create a bubble somewhere in the South. By week eight or nine, the Winning Cures Everything Tennis podcast is coming soon. <laughs> I can guarantee you that will not be what we will be discussing. Uh, Mike Campion said, not only states I'm in Florida and every county, or every county is different. Yeah, yeah, that's... Um, I'm going to tell you that the areas in which these kids are playing, the, the state schools especially, the, they're going to they're going to be loose enough to allow the other teams to come in because those other teams are going to come in in a, such a restricted bubble way. Yeah. They're going to come in on their own private plane. They're going to charter. But they're not flying Southwest, guys. No, not not in the slightest. Uh, Matt Miller said sports is the most watched thing on TV. Some more people care about sports than anything else on TV. He also said Title IX is socialist BS. Um I'll leave that to the to the comments. Uh, Mike Campion said, without a doubt, it's about money, but also they are going to make sure to keep throwing the college athletes are student athletes. Hey, yes, they are student athletes, and I'll tell you this: it, it's like ninety five, ninety six, ninety seven percent of them want to play. At, yep. The majority of these conferences have come out and said they have been told if they don't want to play, they get to redshirt. Yeah, they can redshirt and they can keep their scholarship. So they keep scholarship, uh, and they get to, they don't lose a year of eligibility. If you don't want to play for any reason, you don't have to say I have a medical condition and I'm afraid. I'm just afraid. Okay, yeah, right. simple Stand enough. Uh, Joseph said, if no one's playing the sport, there is no scholarship per se. So yes, redshirt them. Yeah, I'm not sure I fully understand what you're saying, but. I, I'm I saying give them the damn scholarship even if they're not playing. Yeah. No, that I mean, that makes perfect sense. Because we have to keep up the law, right? Yeah. We have to surpass the 100 here, 100 there rule or whatever the number is. I don't know how many college football scholarships you get. Um, 85. Probably know that. 85. 80, so 85, 85 you got 85 men scholarships. We're cutting everybody else. We got to find 85 females that are playing right now. You 85 women get to keep your scholarships. Congratulations. Well, you're you're also going to find thirteen basketball scholarships. So, so you're you're probably right. Looking at a hundred, but, th- but hang on, do you think they care about basketball right now? Uh, not right this second, but they will here shortly. I don't know if they will shortly or not, but maybe they will. Oh, I, I think they will. That's that is still for a lot of schools a big money maker. So, yeah, there they there's places that care more about that than they do football. So, well, yeah, because there's a lot of those schools that don't even have football. Exactly. Exactly. Let's.